Hey, 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 ladies and gentlemen, this is Luminous coming guys with another episode of Learning with Lumi. Today's episode will be focusing on AEI 2000's Jungle Chen play and how he finds a level 5 and 3 and a half minute of jungle play. When I first casted this game, it completely blew my mind because I haven't seen anything near this quickly level of experience in the jungle. There's no first blood involved, just pair jungling. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is how he does it. Mechanically, it isn't really difficult at all. I think the more important thing to really talk about is what happens when you fail, as well as why you shouldn't be doing this, even though you can be. All right, so let's actually jump into the replay here. So the first thing to mention is his starting item, two clarities, a smoke of the seat, a GG branch, as well as a uh, courier purchase for his team. The first camp isn't too spectacular. The gist of this particular, um, I guess, jungling pattern is making sure that you always stack this camp as many times as you can and never missing a stack. This particular stack is probably the most difficult thing that you probably need to practice on, which is migrating both the centaur as well as the hero to get the pull off. Not really that hard if you give it maybe five minutes of practice. So this particular camp is a camp that you want to tackle last and uh, you can see that after he stacked this camp, he immediately moves back to the high camp. This high level camp is the most important part of this uh, jungling session because basically you're just waiting for a wild wing to, to spawn. The wild wing or known as the tornado creep is going to be what allows you to tackle this camp and clear it out as soon as possible. But at the meantime, before you find that wild wing, you're going to be basically clapping um, and uh, jungling as efficient as possible. So you can see that he clapped, pulled the wave back, and then wait for the clap to cool down such that he could just jungle both camps uh, or jungle this level one camp even though it's stacked. Gotta go back to that camp and stack the medium camp as much as possible. This is cutting it very, very close. Generally 53 seconds is the time that you want to go for a stack. He stacked it at 55. It barely just spawned. So I guess AI perhaps getting a little bit lucky or just being very good. You could judge on however you want to say. So now he does find the Wild Ring Ripper and that's kind of where this strategy goes off. This, by the way, to me is the most perfect jungle pattern for this particular jungle pattern that AUI has developed for himself. Um, it is very creep camp dependent. As you see, you need a Wild Wing Ripper and you need this camp to spawn without Mud Golem. So let's actually look, look at some of the percentages. The Wild Wing Ripper, you have four camps to find it in because you have the 30 second camp, the one minute camp, the two minute camp as well as the three minute camp. So you have four chances at the Wild Wing Ripper. There's five different camps. You guys could do the math there. You do have a very decent chance of finding a Wild Wing Ripper. But I have to say that AUI in this particular run of the jungle, he found the Wild Wing Ripper in probably the most perfect time. The second reason why I believe that AUI has probably the luckiest camp spawn is that these Satyr Creeps give you so much experience. These Alpha Wolves, not too bad. These are probably the best camps you can tackle uh, and, and you could do it in a very easy time. Just watch the level shoot up here on AUI. There you go, boom. 318, level 5, done. That blew my mind. That really, really blew my mind. And afterwards, you could just go back and do your regular Chen thing. What do you want to push? What do you want to gank? Whatever else you want to do. So let's actually just exit out this replay and look at another replay where what if you don't get the Wild Ring Ripper? What if you get it late? What if you get it quite early? What do you do? So this replay is going to showcase basically damage control. What happens when you don't get the perfect spawns, which inevitably will happen. So Wild Ring Ripper as a first camp, which says, all right, that's a creep we want, but hold on. This is a bit too early because as you remember from the last run that we saw, it was a ton of rotating through the big creeps. We had a centaur, we had a fur bog, and then we went the wild wing. So if we get wild wing so early, we don't want to sacrifice this creep because we don't know if we're ever going to get that creep again. So double stack, double pull, fairly easy. Make sure you practice this, very important. Bam, bam, thank you. All right, so, hmm, my golem spawns. They're immune to tornadoes, and you don't want to sacrifice this tornado creep. So what do you do? You go back here, make sure that you always check this camp, and make sure maybe if there's another wild wing, then you have more options. 
not another wowing gonna use the first tornado to jungle this camp and notice that before even the first tornado is over he's already sending it to this camp you want to make sure that you clear the high level camp as many times as you can first of all it gives you a lot of experience so it hits you closer in level five uh and the more times you do this camp more importantly, you want to kill this camp quickly enough such that the next camp will spawn. So you could see more fur box, more wildkins. You, you just want more wildkins. Unfortunately, not enough damage to kill this camp quickly enough. So it's, we're going to do yet another double pull. This double pull a little bit harder uh, because, well, not exactly too hard. I take that back. This level camp is actually easier to pull than this one. All right, so we get another camp spawn. Luckily, it was not Golem, but a Centaur is uh, Centaur's okay. Not exactly the best group. You want Satyr, you want Alpha Wolf. But look, we do have another Wild Wing Ripper here. So when I originally fought, first saw this replay, I said, all right, so what he can do here is Tornado his creep, and then basically clear everybody and then dominate this Wild Wing Ripper and use yet another two fresh Tornadoes to stack, stack, and then get his level five. But he does it in a very roundabout way, which I found a little bit odd myself. So instead of making the play that I suggested, which is dominating this Wildwing Ripper, he just kills it, which makes a complete sense now after I think about it, because when you kill the Wildwing Ripper, you get a ton of experience. So uh, sometimes you think to yourself, is it more important to make sure that you have another new Wildwing Ripper, or is it more important to get to that level five? AI says, well, I'll just kill the Wildwing Ripper for the experience, I have this original one, despite the fact that it has no mana left, I'm gonna just send it back, walk it back all the way to base, and then uh, and then go from there. So throughout this meantime of this Wild Wing Ripper slowly walking back to base, I have to say that AUI is just literally sitting there, not doing anything. Now pretend for a, for a moment in time that these two Mud Golems were not Mud Golems, in fact they're Alpha Wolves, so it's the Tears or whatever. He would have actually got himself to level 5 already. Like this is 3 minute and 30 second. He already would have been level 5. Because he had a fresh Satyr. So that's a fresh tornado. He could have just brought, you know, made the play that I was suggesting. Which is dominating the new Wild Wing. Sacrificing the old one. And then just tornado this creep. Bam. Level 5. Replays done. But um, unfortunately because this is a Mud Golem. You have to make another stack. Such that you have enough experience to hit yourself to level 5. Notice that he also could have used Test of Faith to send back the Wild Ring Ripper, but there's no there's no need to because he was gonna just stand there for a full minute anyways. So you can see that despite AUI standing here for an entire full minute doing absolute jack squat, I'm pretty sure he's communicating with team or whatever, but his hero was just standing there doing nothing, he is still gonna hit level five. And this this is uh, this run is about a minute later. So he's gonna hit at about 430, which compared to regular standard. That's already very, very good. Bat Rider hitting level 5, Timbersaw hitting level 5, Chen hitting level 5 as well. So, you can see that comparatively, if you get this jungle properly, you are leveling in a very similar rate as a solo mid. And afterwards, you get to do your push, gank, whatever. So, you're going to be doing this jungle in your own public games, you're going to try it out, you practice your double stack, and you know, it's nice. And then you get Mud Golem Camp. And then another Mike Golem camp. And then another Mike Golem camp. Or you never actually see a Wild Wing Ripper. So my question to you is, what the hell do you do? Well, that's why you started with the Smoke of the Seat. That Smoke of the Seat allows you to have a plan B. And the plan B is the regular Chen plan. Dominating a Centaur, a Fur Bog, or a Dark Troll Warlord. Because if you're not spawning a, a Wild Wing, there's a very good chance of you're spawning those other creeps. You use your smoke and you use your gank. You use your smoke, gank into a push. So I feel like this particular strategy, I like it quite a bit because the plan A is getting a ton of experience. The plan B is to gank and kill. Like that's not a bad plan at all. Just make sure that you know what you're going to be doing in all situations. So practice makes perfect. Lastly, when you're trying to run this in a pub game, make sure the lanes are actually possible. If you notice and rewind back to both of these games, notice the suicide lane from the Radiant side and then a defensive trialing on the Radiant side. If the team decides to offensive trialing against you, you're not likely to pull this off. They could easily send a support into your jungle, ward off your pull cam for example, or disrupt your pull, and basically your jungle is done. So make sure that the heroes line up such a way that you could actually make this jungle without being interrupted. 
Okay, I hope you guys learned uh, something from this uh, AI jungle as I have. Very, very impressive. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, this is Luminous signing off. GG, guys.